Hey everybody, Jim the Tabletop Engineer here and welcome to a new episode. I'm going to continue this week again making some more sci-fi terrain. Specifically, I'm making it for the Stargrave game, but you could use it for any sci-fi uh, terrain that you um, are in need of for whatever game you may be playing. Uh, what I am designing is typically made for the 28 to 32 millimeter miniatures scale wise. So just keep that in mind if you try to duplicate what I'm doing here you may need to scale it up or scale it down depending on your needs. So what are we going to be making in this episode? Well I'm going to show you the quick steps that I made this uh, this sci-fi building right here. It's not symmetrical as you can see. It's got this really unusual shape to it. Uh, the entire thing is made out of chipboard, as you'll soon see, but all the graphics were done in Inkscape. I designed uh, a lot of the graphics here. I stole some of them from one of the previous videos, and you may recognize some of them. Let's get to the tabletop and let me show you how I made this. And uh, if you have any questions, of course, you'll be able to post them in the comments below. So let's go take a look.
So there you go, chipboard. Uh, chipboard's your friend, especially when you wanna make three-dimensional structures and you wanna start out with a basic shape um, and then add the detail work later. Chipboard is just a great medium because you can use wood glue or hot glue, as I did, to, uh, to make them. You know, over time, as you make more of these, you get better at like coming up with methods for, for framing them out. Um, one thing I wanted to avoid was like a cube building or a rectangle building. It's kind of dull, but obviously you want to cut your teeth on doing those first. Um, once you get where you understand which dimensions need to match up and how things will be glued together or how you can fill in holes, for example, then you can start going crazy with some of the shapes and stuff. Now, if you watched carefully, you'll know that a lot of times whenever I had a hole, I would just use hot glue and go around the edges of the hole and then take a piece of chipboard, anything big, place over it, and then I would trim away the excess. And you could use a knife or scissors, whatever's easier for you to get there. Um, it's, uh, it's a quick and easy way to, to fill holes in three-dimensional objects that are sort of unusual shaped or maybe at an angle or something like that. But um, most of it's pretty simple. You're looking at a six inch wide base here. Uh, this top piece is uh, six inches by six, no, it's five inches by five inch square. This is a six inch by, I believe, four inch uh, rectangle here with a curved, you know, angled bottom here. Um, if you're going to try to duplicate this, I will make these stickers available again. They'll be in the files section of the Tabletop Engineer Facebook page, and you can download them. And you can use, um, for instance, you can use that sticker right there to get this side shape or the, you know, the close approximate approximation to it. Um, I didn't really keep track of the dimensions that I did on all of this stuff. Yeah, I, I, I definitely encourage you to try something like this if you if you're ready for that. Um, but make your own shapes, you know, come up with something unusual. I didn't want this side to match this side. And I did find a picture on the internet that sort of gave me the inspiration for this. So I'm not going to take credit for this, but I couldn't find it again. I just remember seeing it and, and realizing that the two halves here did not match up. I hope you like it. I'll include some close-up photos um, along with some photos with miniatures for scale so that you can see all the details and stuff like that. Uh, I finished it up by just adding some three-dimensional pieces like this uh, conduit here, this wiring conduit, and then some pieces from my junk uh, bin just to, just to further uh, give it a 3D like this antenna tower here and stuff like that. So I hope you like it and I certainly hope you'll give it a try. It's not extremely difficult um, to work with chipboard. Just be careful when cutting it and uh, using hot glue. Be careful you don't get burned. I do burn myself all the time with it. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, also, I would love to invite you to please come join us over at the Tabletop Crafters Guild Facebook group. Uh, I am one of five guild masters over there, and we run a place where gamer crafters or crafting gamers can come and share photos, ask questions, show off what they're making and things like that. And it's just a fun place to hang out. I'd also welcome you to come join me over at my own Facebook group, the Tabletop Engineer Facebook group, where you can find videos that don't make YouTube. Uh, I do a uh, Thursday morning show and tell live on Facebook, and those videos are always saved. Uh, I also am now doing a Friday uh, session on Zoom called Paint a Pair of Minis, where I paint a pair of minis, and um, I definitely welcome you to, to, um, to, to come join me there. All of the dates and times for these things are posted on the Tabletop Engineer page, usually as a reminder in the mornings on the day of. So on Friday morning, I'll get up and I'll post what time I'm going to be doing the Paint the paint the Minis class, for example. For you Stargrave players, you might be interested, I'm doing a five-part uh, solo campaign called The Derelict. It started on the May 1st issue. June 1st will be part two. It's going to be five parts. It's meant to be run with the Stargrave rule set. Um, it is a, I won't give any of the surprises away, but it is a solo campaign that you can run. And each, um, each month for five months, a new part will come out until the conclusion. So again, there's more information on that in the description below as well. I want to do more of these. This is sort of the style that I like for my tabletop. Uh, but I always welcome you to share what you're making over at the Tabletop Engineer Facebook page, and I'd love to see your take on this kind of thing. All right, that's it. I'll be back next Wednesday with another crafting video. Until then, everybody, take care.
Each month, Bexum's Bazaar RPG and Wargaming magazine provides gamers with articles, props to print and cut out for players, mini adventures, new monsters, and much more. Look in the description below for details on how to get a few free issues so you can see what you're missing.